Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Sheen, your host. This is Money Matters. Today, we're going to talk about NAT stock again. All right, I've been a bad boy. I've been a naughty boy. I did something I said I wasn't going to do. So I bought more NAT stock. I know, I need a spanking. I, I, I broke my rule. I decided to pick up even more shares of NAT. So uh, we're going to talk about that. We're talking about why. We're talking about their numbers, uh, their report that they just had a couple of days ago. So if you like what I'm doing, guys, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet already. Check out my other videos. I do a lot of videos about money, finance, how to grow your money, how to invest your money, how to make money work hard for you. With that, let's get started. All right, guys, so here it is. Here is proof that I've been a bad boy. I uh, purchased 10 more shares of NAT at $4.81. Uh, then I purchased another roughly 11 shares at $4.50. Uh, I said in my previous video that uh, my limit was $300. I wasn't gonna put more than $300. I was willing to lose $300 on this stock. Uh, but uh, I've been naughty. I decided to put another $100 into the stock, uh, honestly, because uh, I just think the value was too good. The value at $4, under $5, $4.50 uh, for this company uh, is just too hard to pass up. And so that's why I put in another 100 bucks. Uh, I think that is all I'm gonna do, uh, unless it drops maybe to $3. Uh, it's getting really tough. I don't wanna put too much into this already. Uh, so I probably am gonna stop at $400. So let's talk about why why I'm doing this. Let's talk about their numbers. Uh, they reported some amazing numbers. Uh, you know, the stock market in general is just unbelievable. Even with this whole illness 19 situation, the stock market is just uh, going crazy, going bonkers. Look at my portfolio. Uh, the last time I reported my portfolio I was about 8% positive. Uh, now I'm up 10.38% on this portfolio. Uh, so just un incredible on NAT specifically, I'm down roughly 14%. Uh, so there's my cost basis at $5.47 a share. I currently have $399 invested in this. Uh, and so it's currently trading at roughly $4.71. And 71 cents. So NAT just reported their earnings, Q1 earnings, and no surprise, uh, their earnings were fantastic. Uh, top, they beat on the top line, they beat on the bottom line. They're doing the best they ever did in years. So uh, no big surprise. We all knew this was coming. We all knew uh, numbers were going to be fantastic. Uh, so let's take a look. So Nordic American Tankers NAT report their first quarter 2020. So first quarter net operating earnings beat the full year of 2019. So just think about that. Just in Q1 of 2020, they beat the whole year of 2019. The whole four quarters of 2019. So that says something. Uh, it is normal in the tanker business to meet with disruptions and unexpected events. We capitalize on such disruptions, which we expect will take place in the future too. Prospects for 2020 and 2021 are promising. All right, we're gonna go over the highlights. Here's number one. Uh, so first highlight, our net profit for Q1 2020 improved from last quarter, uh, Q4 2019, and came in at 39.5 million against a net profit of 12.7 million for Q4 2019, and a net profit of 5.6 million in Q1 of 2019. So year over year, Q1 of 2019 versus Q1 of 2020, they went from 5.6 million to 39.5 million. That is a, roughly a 7x gain. 7x gain from Q1 2019 to Q1 2020. That is incredible. 7x on their bottom line. Uh, after everything said is done, what they put in their pocket uh, was 7x of Q1 of Q1 of 2019. Uh, so here's number two, EBITDA. So EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation and amortization. Uh, so basically it's just a way to better see their cash flow. Uh, so EBITDA for their first quarter 2020 uh, in that was 64.9 million. This is a 72% increase from the previous quarter 20, uh, 2019 Q4. Uh, which is generated an EBITDA of 37.7 million. EBITDA is an expression of the cash generated from our operations. Uh, so 72% increase, that's amazing. Next, number three, returning profits to our shareholders through cash dividends is a priority for NAT. On March 24th, 2020, we, re -announced, we announced our 91st, 91st consecutive, 91st consecutive quarterly dividend. Uh, way to go on the dividend, continuously paying that dividend. Uh, the dividend for the first quarter of 2020 is 14 cents per share payable on June 5th to shareholders on record of May 26, 2020. 
uh, this is double the dividend in its previous quarter. Uh, so let's just look at the calculation on that. Uh, so 14 cents a quarter times four quarters, roughly 56%. Uh, if the share price is at roughly the $5 range, $5 and below, that's roughly a 11% yield. That's a monstrous yield uh, on a four to $5 stock, 11% return. Uh, so, you know, I mean, you don't get that anywhere. That is a monster yield, uh, you know, 11% return. Guys, it's gonna be more than 11% uh, because 14 cents, that's just for their first quarter. Uh, they only started making this big money starting in March. Uh, but, you know, March was when it first started. Now you have April, May, and June. Uh, so in their second quarter, their numbers are gonna even be better. Uh, so this dividend is gonna go up and it's gonna be a lot more than this 11% yield probably maybe a 15, maybe 17% yield, uh, depending on how good their numbers are. So number four, uh, the average time charter achieved for the first quarter of 2020 across our fleet was $44,100 per day per ship, up almost 40% from $31,700 per day per ship in Q4 2019. So far in the second quarter of 2020, about 75% of the trading days of our fleet have been booked and an average uh, rate about $50,000 per day per ship. This is an encouraging signal for dividend payments for Q2 2020. So there it is, they're already talking about it. Q2 uh, 2020, their dividends are gonna be even higher. Our operation costs are about $8,000 per day. Uh, so roughly they're making $42,000 per day per ship. Uh, number five, muted supplies of ships create a base for a solid future for the tanker industry. The world economies are gradually reopening and especially Asian economies are showing encouraging improvements. This bodes well for the tanker market in the second half of 2020 and the full year of 2021. At the end of Q1 2020, NAT is in the best position ever. So, you know, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to get one of these ships. It's not like you can order a ship uh, on Amazon and it comes in the next day, right? Uh, it at least probably takes a year to maybe 18 months to build these ships. And a lot of these ships are pretty much uh, on pause. They're not building these ships anymore. Uh, so uh, it's not like someone's gonna be able to come come over and just start start taking over, you know? Uh, basically, NAT already has 23 of these uh, ships, these Suez Maxis ships. Uh, so they are uh, in a great position because not only are they holding oil, but you think about it, when the economy starts opening up uh, and you know things start happening, uh, planes are starting to fly again, they're gonna need this oil to be moving all over the world. They need to move this oil in order to sell it. Uh, so it's not just holding the oil, just that they're storing it now, but when the economy starts ramping up, you're gonna to have to start transporting this oil. Uh, so obviously NAT already has all this oil, and so they're gonna be transporting it, and so they're still gonna be making money uh, into 2020 and into 2021. And so the economy starts opening up, they're gonna to have to have some way to transport this oil as well. So the big question is, why the F has NAT stock gone down then? You know, the, the reports are good. They beat on the top line. They beat on the bottom line. Uh, they're gonna pay a massive dividend. Their dividend is gonna grow uh, in Q2 and Q3. Uh, it's probably gonna be, like I said, maybe 15 to 70%, 15 to 17% yield. So why the hell is their stock going down? Uh, well, you know, this happens all the time. Uh, just because the company does well does not really reflect uh, in the short term the stock price. Long story short, the reason why NAT stock is going down is because uh, they didn't blow everyone out of the water. Like everyone knew uh, these numbers already. Everyone knew how well they're gonna do. Everyone knew uh, their revenue. Everyone knew they're gonna be paying high dividends. This is not new news. Uh, so the price uh, for this, that is why their stock price went to seven, eight, and nine dollars because of this news. Uh, and a lot of people made their money, you know, probably bought in at roughly four dollars or three dollars. I uh, wrote it all the way to $9 because they knew this news was gonna come out uh, and then they took their profits. That's why, that's why the stock uh, has crashed down to under $5 now. So, uh, you know, if NAT reported even bigger numbers than this, possibly their stock price would be going up. You know, m maybe if they reported like $80 million uh, on their bottom line instead of 39 million, uh, that would have really blew everyone out of the water. That would be really, really unexpected. Uh, so the news was already good and everybody, everybody already knew this news. So that's why uh, the stock price just went down because it didn't blow anybody out of the water. That, that's basically the reason. Uh, so you see here's a chart basically uh, right after the report, uh, right after they announced their earnings, uh, the stock price crashed. You know, it was at roughly $4.85, $4.90. 
uh, and after the report came out, uh, it dropped down to four dollars and roughly fifty cents. Uh, it has rode up back to four ninety, up and down, and currently at, is at roughly four dollars and seventy one cents. So the question is, should you buy? Should you sell? You know, I think it all boils down to what is your cost basis. If you have look at this chart, if you uh, were buying this uh, above this red line, you know, above six dollars, uh, you know, above six dollars, six, seven, eight, nine dollars. If you're buying uh, on the top of that mountain. Uh, that is a tough call. Uh, that's really tough because, uh, you know, it, for me, for instance, you know, I, I bought in at roughly six dollars and then I stopped buying. Then I started buying when the prices came back down, you know, came back down to five dollars and then four dollars. Uh, and then today I bought at four dollars and fifty cents. So I was able to bring my cost basis uh, to roughly five dollars and change. And so I think if you're in it at the five dollar range, uh, it's a pretty good position because uh, at the five dollar range, your yield is roughly going to be uh, 11% and uh, it's going to be higher because you know they're going to raise that dividend uh, so you know who knows what it's going to be but I'm predicting that it's probably going to be uh, maybe 15 cents maybe up to 17 cents uh, so that's probably going to be closer to a 17% yield uh, on that five dollars so like I said if you're in it at the five dollar range like I am uh, I, would, I would consider holding it uh, collecting that you know 14 to maybe 17 percent yield that they're going to do for the rest of this year uh, maybe into 2021 uh, collect that m monster dividend uh, and maybe the, the price will appreciate maybe up to seven eight nine dollars again uh, and then get rid of it then i mean that's the best position to be in that's why you never want to fomo buy and this stock was going crazy uh, basically climbing this mountain uh, that is not a time to buy because now if you're in that position it's going to be really tough because you're probably going to have to wait maybe 18 months to 24 months uh, before the price goes from current prices, you know, under $5 to back up to seven, eight, nine, ten dollars uh, So that's a long time. That's a long time to wait just to break even, you know, 18 months to 24 months just to break even on your money. That's a, that, uh, that's a tough call. Uh, you know, if I was in that position, I would maybe consider uh, selling it and putting in something that's going to appreciate faster. Uh, but again, uh, if you're, in it for you know under five dollars or five dollars and under uh i probably hold on to it like i said collect that dividend uh and you know if, if, even if it goes up to only seven dollars in the next uh, 18 months uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty decent gain combined with your dividend so guys that's my opinion uh let me know if you agree let me know if you disagree check out my other videos if you like what i'm doing consider subscribing give me a thumbs up really helps out the channel I do a lot about video videos about money finance how to grow your money how to invest your money how to make money work hard for you that's the next one. Peace.